Good evening, Danvers. I'm Mark Zuberek, and I'm here as the host of Topics of the Town News. I appreciate you coming on board. This is the July 21st, 2022 show, and uh, I have uh, to apologize that this show has been in the making for the last three weeks. However, we got to the point where it is going live this evening. Welcome to our local broadcast. This broadcast is intended for open exchange of ideas, providing a forum for our resident communicate commentators, communicators, and men for Danvers residents. I appreciate the time and effort that we have uh, put together for this uh, show. And I want to thank uh, David Rodriguez from DCAT for helping me get this thing on the board. Tonight, first I'd like to do a short but very uh, important tribute to Dana Foy. Dana Foy was a friend of mine, and he was a friend of a lot of residents in the town of Danvers. Dana Foy, age 78, he was of Danvers and died on June 30th, 2022. Dana was a gentleman and a friend with extra energy. Dana was always available to ha help friends, town, and country. Dana served honorably in the U.S. Army during the Vietnam era, and that's I uh, was not involved in that, but uh, that was a troubling times. Uh, Dana has, uh, was a resident for nearly 50 years, similar to my time. He was a past president of both Danvers American Little League and Danvers Babe Ruth Baseball, which he worked to reestablish and reinvigorate. He was former scoutmaster of Troop 58. He had also been active in the Danvers Lions Club and the Touchdown Club, an officer of the Catholic Count, uh, Couples Club, a member of the Polish Club, and was town meeting member for many years. He was also a great friend and contributor to the betterment of Danvers, and I am proud to call him my friend. I went to his uh, wake and to his um, uh, last uh, day uh, at the burial, and boy, was there a turnout for him. He was well-liked and very involved individual. He was always available for political action as well as community actions. So farewell, Dana and we'll miss you. So now, what I'd like to present is a clip that I've used in the past, and this one is, Our Voices Will Change the World. The agenda and opinions of the topics of the town host are the topics of the town host and commentator's responsibility. But I like to share this, our voices will change the world. And that's the one thing that we have been sort of removed from the general discussions that we've had in town because everybody's uh, you know, concerned about COVID and about being frightened and all that. We need to resume our communications with our elected officials as well as our neighbors and uh, family. So the First Amendment, I've been reading on and off for many weeks and months now, Congress shall not make no law respecting and establishing of religion, uh, prohibiting the free exercise thereof, or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press, or the right of the people peaceably to assemble and to petition the government for redress of grievances. 
First Amendment is so important to our community and our families and our nation and our state because we deserve and we are guaranteed that opportunity to speak up and express our views as we have in the past and we must continue this in the future. Therefore, this show has been very active in presenting issues and concerns from the residents because the press has basically abandoned um, every uh, story that has been happening in Danvers because it's too small. Our town is very concise and compact but the issues are still there. They are not necessarily issues of the state or the nation, but there are private, public issues that are happening in our town. And the only stories that get out to the press are the ones that are planted by the town hall or the school committee. And those are the two main bodies of elected officials that we have. So the next clip I use is the Republic uh, clip by um, Franklin um, who said this, in, eight, in 1787, anxious citizens waited outside Independence Hall to hear the results of the Constitutional Convention. As the delegates left the building, a woman in the crowd asked, well, doctor, what have we got? Without hesitation, Franklin replied, a republic if you can keep it. So it's very important for us to exercise our rights and our obligations that are driven by the Constitution and we need to stop infringing on each other's rights and the state has to stop infringing on our rights. So, the quick response in regards to a valuable uh, lesson that we all should be learning is integrity is a valuable characteristic for anyone interested in serving our community. You have to keep your feet on the ground and remember that this is what you've worked for for all your life. You can't get carried away with your image because you know better than anyone else who the real person is. And I'm really speaking to our elected officials, our school committee, our town meeting members, because these are the people that represent us at the legislative uh, actions that are taken at town meeting and at the selectmen's meeting. Selectmen need to listen to the public. Our goal must be to independently represent Danvers because town government is the cornerstone of the entire community. Our goal is to deliver a voice for the Danvers residents and must be independent. Government must lead and not just follow. And we're getting into a custom of following other ideas from outside of our community and not listening to our residents. Making the governance process more open and obvious. This is an issue that has been happening as a result of COVID. And COVID is over, guys. The integrity of our uh, elected officials must come back. Getting community feedback, input, and putting it into action. That's what's needed. Improvement of expectations, technology, and standards. We've done some good things in regard to technology, but we still are falling back on our old ways of not listening to the general public. The establishment, which includes all our elected officials and some of their residents, like the establishment likes the status quo because they don't have to do anything 
to respond to questions. And I am, I am getting to a, uh, an issue that I have found as the selectmen, the school committee, and the uh, library trustees have a public comment in their agenda for every meeting. Now, I've noticed that at the selectmen's meeting, there are public comments and requests and questions, but what happens is that the public comment is registered on television, never acted on after that because there is no response that they are required to give. We need to demand a uh, response to some of the comments that have been uh, presented to the Board of Selectmen and the School Committee. The one thing that has been very uh, interesting is that the awakening of Danvers residents about what really matters is very important. Blind obedience to current leadership in government, racial agenda, LGBTQ agenda, education, indoctrination, and historical cultural circumstances must be explored again. The town management initiated a new position for the DEI to our government activities and the school department inactivity. Now this committee or the director now has been established to deflect the decisions that have to be done and have to be considered by our elected officials. This is a way of deflecting the requests and the issues that are happening in our community. Why? It is to divert the public attention for the lack of leadership and management by our elected officials and leaders. What is right and what is wrong? I don't think we, we know. The, the DEI com uh, committee has been very active, and I appreciate that. But the thing is that decisions have to be made by our elected officials, and that includes our town meeting members. So, to explore a different avenue of what's going on in our town, I decided on June 6th or 7th, I believe, uh, to go and film the uh, library trustee meeting. They were very surprised that anyone from the public would even attend. So I made my uh, presentation and I have been reading and been reported to by uh, many uh, in residents in our town, and I've explained that to them. The drag queen reading that was happening at the uh, uh, library grounds. On Sunday, June 5th, the Peabody Institute Library grounds, drag queen reading was taking place. After hearing about some alarming features regarding the drag queens and their indoctrinal in initiatives to the locale, some residents observed last Sunday's drag queen reading at the Danvers Public Library grounds. The crowd of about 100 at any one time, 50 to 60 being children, was very festive with some creative dress, hairstyles, and making up what would stand out in the day-to-day -day activities, but all blended joyfully together in comfort at this gathering. And I have a little clip of what was going on because we have residents that are interested in what's going on in our town, and we have reporters that contribute to this show. And this is one clip, so David, if we can show that little library grounds clip, I would appreciate it. Now we have. Where did the warmer red scarf? Is that silver? No, 
Well, that was just a one visual clip that was made. Okay, uh, this is my reporting already happening. Uh, what I noticed at that uh, clip, and then there is a uh, request by, after a police officer notified this resident that the parents had an issue with video the attendant went to the audio only. So we have some uh, audio only, but I, I don't want to you know, belabor this situation, but people were solo dancing, hopping and moving rhythmically to the endless driving beat of techno music. The children were for the most part accompanied by adults and were all well behaved. The entire crowd was having a good time. The drag queen readings were benign on the surface. All colors are beautiful and bodies are cool, but for children, whether accompanied by adults or not, there were subliminal messages conveyed. We are to approve of all varieties of behaviors and that we should think about our different and unique body parts. These characterizations implicitly segue to other more provocative materials that are widely found in many public libraries and in schools where they are, they are often is not a parental supervisor. Uh, the next issue, I have two issues, so I'll run a clip. Uh, we'll skip the audio clip, David. We'll go to the first clip of the library trustees meeting where I made my presentation to the library trustees and requested answers. So please read, uh, run that clip. Now this is a library trustee meeting in the library itself. We'll do the pledge. The meeting was very well organized. To the flag, the and to uh, the library trustees chairwoman is Natalie Luca Fiore. The library director is uh, Nicole Bach. Yay. <coughs> All right, um, a couple of comments. We have Mark Zubrick here tonight, so I think he wants to say something, Mark? Yes, I do. Thank you very much. Um, I, if we speak up, it would be a lot easier for me to later on to edit it. Oh, okay. I would uh, like to just make a statement mm -hmm. because I've been inundated with emails and uh, notices from different individuals in our community. And as you know, I'm reporter for Topics of the Town News. And on Sunday, June 5th, at the Peabody Institute Library grounds, Drag Queen Reading was taking place. After hearing about some of the alarming features regarding the drag queens and their indoctrinal initiatives to the locale, some residents observed last Sunday's Drag Queen Reading at the Danvers Public Library grounds. The crowd of about I don't know, it's 100 to 200 people at any one time, 50 to 60 being children, was very festive with some creative dress, hairstyles, makeup that would stand out in day-to-day -day activities, but all blended joyfully together in comfort at this gathering. People were solo dancing, hopping and moving rhythmically to the endless driving beat of techno music. The children were from the most part accompanied by adults and were all well behaved. The entire crowd was having a good time. Drag queen readings 
we're benign on the surface. All colors are beautiful, was one of the symbolic statements. And bodies are cool. But for children, whether accompanied by adults or not, there were subliminal messages conveyed. We are to approve of all varieties of behaviors, and that should we think about our differences and unique body parts. The question has been raised over and over again is does this belong in a public presentation like a public library that we have here, which is a what wonderful facility. Say, say what? What better place? Well, uh, can I ask why this is being videotaped? Uh, because I'm a reporter for Topics of the Town and I have, uh, you know, permission to record every public meeting. Okay, that you can continue. Go ahead, Mark. These characterizations implicitly a segue to other more provocative materials that are widely found in many public libraries and in schools where there often is not parental supervision. The books are shelved at some libraries about one or two feet off the floor for the children's area. Some of the books that are in Massachusetts libraries and should not be are entitled Gender Queer, Queer is All Gets Out, This Book is Gay, A is for Activist, and there are many, many more that have been incorporated into our school libraries or our public library, and that's the question that's coming up. How does this become the norm in our town of Danvers? Why does the library participate in such endeavors? Does the board even know what activities are permitted and which are authorized yes. by your actions because you are the trustees of this library and we appreciate that. But the thing is, the community needs to know what the heck are you guys permitting to happen. So that's my main statement. I'd like to go into executive session. I don't, yeah, no, yeah. We, we, we can. Um, we, we, can we can. I do have a question. Were you there? I was uh, present with other individuals. Were you at the Pride Festival? Not at the. You were not the there. Back I didn't observe yeah. the reading. I was I the entire time. <laughs> okay. And I was Julia. Yeah. Yeah, I was there. Okay. So that's from you. That, yeah. That's those are not. No, this is this is a result of the communications I've had with many many residents. Many many. Oh. Yes. Okay, you got. Many, many, five. Has anybody received an email from I've anybody? received nothing. No. No. I have no. 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 So well, why would they email you? Because I'm the vehicle for getting some of this information out. Mm -hmm. But but wait, you know, what? all of our, we are, we're a public art board and none of us have received any comments from the public no. about that event. As you have maybe seen my show, there are residents that are afraid to bring up issues because they are condemned right after they bring issues up. And this is one of the vehicles of getting that information out. Well, I will say that the event, which was planned by the Human Rights and Inclusion Committee, was about inclusion and welcoming and having a, an amazing community. And that's all it was. It was a celebration, and there were families, and it was amazing. So I don't understand the complaints um, unless they are specifically anti-LGBTQ. Well, everybody's got their own issues. But that's, that's denying somebody's humanity, and so that's not a uh, valid complaint about the actions of the library. The library is here for everybody. Right, and that's the reason why I'm bringing it up because it is for everybody and what you're doing is we didn't exclude anybody and what those complaints are asking is that we exclude a percentage of our our community no they're not asking for that what uh, so if oh, let me just ask you this mark so um can you can can you tell us what it is somebody wants is looking for to have the director remove books from the library? Like, what is it? Well, the, what I think what everybody's looking for is some answers of why some of these books are in the library. You just said specific and Massachusetts library. So are you bringing a, a formal complaint? 
about I, I can, but I don't want to. I mean, I'm here to discuss it with you because you are the trustees and I'm bringing it forward so you, you know, understand where it's coming problem? from. Is the problem the event or is the problem a list of books that somebody put It's a combination of both. It's a combination of both. Well, we have a policy and a procedure. If you would like to challenge the books, then you need to go do that. Well, We're I, not I, discuss that I definitely, we will, we will come in and take a look at the books that are on the shelves because that's where people get concerned is that the... What, what concern? Why? What concern? Yeah. Is What's there... The concern? Well, look at the titles that Those have been identified. Amazing. I've read all of them. Yeah. yeah. Have you? No. Or have any, no. Of, many, have any, any of, of these many people read any of them? Yes, they have. Oh, yeah. Okay. And okay. they have withdrawn their kids from school because well, some of the, the books are inappropriate for their age level. We're talking about and the, the schools also have a policies and procedures in place, but that's not relevant to this conversation well it, it is because it's going to be brought up to the school department as well because this is something that's the town was sponsoring and i don't even know if, you, if the library was sponsoring this event no, and i don't think it was it was the town that was sponsoring yeah. it. right yes that's and right the library lawn is not the libraries it belongs to the town and it is the town's property so it is not about the library, whether that event takes place on the lawn or not, or any event takes we place just on the lawn. That had nothing. That event members. had nothing to do with the library. That's it, that's. Yeah. Why I wanted to make sure that that was the current. But I will say that even if it was, I would have supported it. Well, that's fine. I mean, you're a trustee. You're responsible to the voters, and that's. And I think that the majority of people in Danvers also would agree. Well, I'll tell you one thing: is that. Majority of people in Danvers do agree because they don't want to express their views. And I have said that on my show several times. And the thing is that they're afraid of being chastised after the fact and, uh, you know, uh, identified as somebody that's against everything. If that were the case, then our votes would show that, and that has not happened. Well. I just wanted to bring this to your attention because this is something... There is, there is a policy. If people, if somebody wants to, and we wouldn't necessarily know who, correct? No, um, no they it, have to give their name. Nope, they have to give their name. There is a collection development policy which okay. is on the library's website. You can view it at any time. If someone wants to challenge a specific book or other material, they can do so by filling out a form. They have to give their name, they have to give their address, they have to give their phone number and their contact information. That's and fine. The, and the material will be reviewed by a select group of people and then an answer will be given to those people about whether or not th they need to get, tell us what exactly they object to and they have to tell us exactly that they've read the whole material or not and then the material will be reviewed. If they have to also tell us what they want to be done, like if they you know what the point is to their actually complaints you know do they want us to remove the material do they want to put somewhere else that all has to come forward it's cannot have anonymous you know I think one protests. of the one of the things that you need to identify is who has requested or why was a book requested to be placed in the library we have a collection development policy, the policy that we just referenced states okay. why can you send that to me Yep, it's, it's, on, on it's, on, it's on the website. You can just go uh, right on the website. You know what? I hate the websites <laughs> because that's a, you know, it, it's a place to bury things, and I don't want to start going through that. So if you could send it to me, I would appreciate it. All right, it. just uh, leave me your email address, and I'll... Oh, my email address is all over town, I'll tell you. It's, well, it's mark.zubrak well, at gmail.com. Was it mark.zubrak? There you go. There was my uh, introduction to the library trustees, and they had no indication of why these things are happening or, well, they said that the town is sponsoring everything. So they, they basically washed their hands, but uh, this is not a, an issue that's the library trustees issue. But it's also the DEI issue, the uh, town manager issue, the selectman issue, and specifically the school committee. 
The school committee has denied every single question that has been raised to them in regards to this particular issue. And there's, there's other issues, and they ha I have some um, information here in regards to a FOIA request that was presented uh, to the school committee on April 9th, 2021. <coughs> and that is going to be explored at a show later on in August, and I want to get into more details on that because I have been at the school committee meetings and uh, people are upset, but they don't get any answers. They get to uh, express their uh, frustration at the microphone, but nothing happens. So uh, the other uh, item that I uh, filmed at the meeting was, um, um, well, let's, let's look at the, well, we already looked at the books. Uh, the books have been identified. We need to have the parents themselves get involved in this thing because uh, this is something that's been going on for years. The Queer Story Hour or reading is not the first time that has been done in the town of Danvers. This was done probably 10, eight to 10 years ago, I believe, and that has been scrubbed from the internet because they don't want us to uh, refresh our memories of at that time. At that time, the reading was being done in the children's area. So uh, this is getting to a point where people need to get involved. And all I wanted to do is bring it up to the library trustees and the town manager basically because that has been passed on to the town manager. I know that for sure. So David, if we can go to uh, uh, the next clip and let's just go quickly through that. That you know, okay, I can remember okay. that. So I want to thank you for listening, but I also want to uh, address one more issue is that the, the readers or the participants in this um, drag queen reading, they have their own website and we have looked at their website and they're, they're a little scary. So that's the like reason. Why are they scary? Because they identify things like, uh, you know, sexual acts for, for the kids, for the little kids. I mean, they're... Uh, That's not true. Well, uh, look at their website then. Who, who are, what, what, website are you, what website are you talking about? This is the one that was present at this... So uh, just their JP, what's yes. their name? That was their name? Uh, JB Burr or Barr. That or is not the person that we had. The, uh, the name of the person that we had was not Patrick Burr or... Patrick, Patrick Burr is that one is of the not, names. Yes. That was not the web. That was not the person we had. You well. people are taking information from other places and then conflating it with us. Right. That had, that was not our person. So you're taking information and slurring somebody that was not actually there. Well, we just want to take this opportunity to bring it up to your attention. Okay. And I'd like to stress again that it was held on town property. Well, we understand that. Okay. Have it you, was held have you mentioned on town, town property. It had to have been approved by the town. Right. So I really, with respect to you, and you know I respect you, right. you I should appreciate not even that. be talking to us. You should be talking to the town. You are our direct communicator no, regarding the library itself. But, but it's not anything to do with the library. It's to do with town property, which is what the library is on, town property. So that event was a town event, but if you're talking about the books, that's a separate issue. And, that's right. And it's been explained how, how that needs to be addressed. Okay. But if it's, it's a complaint against having that, um, within the town or whatever, then I would say you need to talk to the Human Rights and Inclusion Committee or you need to talk to Town Manager Bather and... And, and we will. Yeah, okay. The, the, the point here is that we wanted to bring this up yep. to you okay. as the trustees. Okay. And uh, make you aware of it. 
Okay, so we'll be watching to see if anybody does actually put that complaint in informally yeah. in writing, which is their right to happens. do that. Yeah. And yeah. if you have a complaint in writing, who should you go to? Well, the, the library director. Yep. So that's to me. Yeah. That, but the complaint would be specifically about the books. The books yeah. Or the okay. Materials. That's yes. that's fine. That that's right. why I want to make sure that everybody knows. Yeah. And we can go to. Um, the form is on the website. Anybody can access it, or she was going to email it directly to you. But anybody fine. else out there can access. That'll it That'll be directly. great. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mark. Okay. Thank you. All right. Denial, denial, deflection, deflection. It is not a issue for the trustees. I, 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 that's fine. But this is a combined effort on the town-wide approach. Okay, David, we can go to the next one. I think that'll be the last one. And what I want to do is just explain this a little bit more. If I may. Sure. I'm reading here on your um, director's report. Community Pride Party on the Liberal Lawn on Sunday, June 5th, featured myself, Jillian, Chippa, and Amy volunteering. I volunteered to book the drag queen story time and run the LGBTQ trivia. What I think the question that comes after that is, who pays for that? The, the Human Rights the Human and Inclusion Rights Committee. Committee. Okay, that's yep. that's what I wanted yep. to know. Not, Thank you. Nothing to do with the library still. <laughs> okay. Except that I was there. See, there's, there's a conflicting piece of information, and uh, I didn't want to go into more detail, but it is booked by the library, and it's on library grounds, and the library trustees and the library director basically wash their hands, and we didn't have anything to do with it. So, but that's beside the point. We need to go and get into more details, and what I intend to do is explore this issue because this is a continuing um, issue that has been uh, discussed at the school committee meetings. Parents have uh, come in before the school committee and asked to have their children withdrawn from uh, specific classes that are teaching certain books. And I will try to get some of those parents to come on and we'll have a general discussion. The rest of the trustee meeting was basically um, harmless. Uh, they do handle their meeting very well. I appreciated the time that uh, they've allowed me to speak. I was not shut down except for the executive session request. I don't know what the heck that was about, but the executive, uh, uh, you know, was uh, squashed right away by uh, uh, library trustee Natalie Luca Fiore, which she absolutely understood what was happening. This is an issue that needs to be explored, and it does not need to be buried under the rug again. We need to get a little bit more information of what actually our children, especially, are either reading and listening to at the library, and we need to get into the school department issues. And that has basically fallen apart. Uh, the superintendent basically resigned. She's gone. She wants to be out of the limelight. Now we have a temporary superintendent, and we do not really have access to a lot of the information because Mr. Taverna was very good about replying 
and I have a FOIA request in regard to the titles, edition, publishers of all books, videos, pamphlets, web-based materials or other curricula involving human sexual education or human sexuality issues implemented or maintained in your district. This was a uh, request uh, by uh, Andrew Beckwith and uh, this is something that's available and I will distribute that information when it comes. Uh, I even have uh, outlines for the curriculum for this particular subject. And it's for grades, uh, lower grades uh, up to six, and then six to nine, and then nine to 12. And they're all different. And the books are basically not identified as requested because all they gave the FOIA request um, air at airtime uh, was their uh, curriculum outline, and we'll get into that a little bit more. So, now uh, the rest of the meeting uh, with the trustees was went very well. They had some issues in regard to the signage of the library entrances and exits and uh, routing. And then uh, they basically uh, concluded the meeting until September 14th, I believe, will be the next, uh, yes, at 7 p.m. The next uh, meeting will be on Wednesday, September 14th at 7 p.m. This was the first time I went to a library trustee meeting to televise it, similar to what I have done in the past with the Municipal Light Board with the Water and Sewer Commission, with the school committee, and I get a different flavor from these meetings because uh, the trustees are not being televised, the Municipal Light Board is not being televised, and the Water and Sewer Commission is not being televised. So the thing that worries me is that a lot of these decisions are being made in the back room of the organizations and they need to get some fresh air and that's why I attend some of these meetings and surprise them sometimes but I get full cooperation I have had no reply that I'm not welcome in the town of Danvers as you may know in the past I've had a uh, um, participation by the Beverly Airport where I was banned for a period of time and I sued them. And this is no different. This is open meeting laws that apply to each and every one of these organizations and they need some ventilation to have people see what actually is going on. What I'll do is I'll air the additional uh, components, but I don't think they apply at this time. We're running out of time anyway. So the one thing that I want to present is I've had a segment here that I've been using for many, many months now, and it's all related to what has happened to the independent Danvers education system? And this really applies to many facets of what's going on. The reduction in the number of students that are going to the Danvers school system has been tremendous lately. They are fleeing from the current establishment that has been active for the last 20 years and they are going to the Essex Tech. That's a wonderful magnet school for technical education. They're going to Bishop Fenwick. They're going to St. John's Prep. 
St. John's Prep now has even a uh, middle school uh, population that they have developed in their system. They're going to St. Mary's as the under uh, eight uh, grade uh, students. But there's also plans in the future, near future, of a charter school that's being discussed and being planned on the border of Peabody and Danvers down towards uh, Pulaski Street. So there, there are issues that are happening and my dissertation here is what has happened to the independent Danvers education system? It has gone down to a level where people do not want to attend. And we need to change that. This has been discussed for many years. But what has really been happening is our students have been cheated out of one and a half, now two and a half years of education. Remote learning has failed. And this was written at the time when we had the COVID restrictions. Parents had to rely on tutors and homeschooling. Homeschooling is continuing. So there is a diversion of students from the Danvers school system because parents are taking an active role in homeschooling. Why did the school population decrease this year, last year, and this year? Um, how did we measure up performance? There has been denial about performance. Nobody wants to bite at the bullet on, on that uh, situation. Uh, how did we spend the taxes on our children's education? The, the cost of education has not gone down. The only discussion that has been taking place is Essex Tech because 241 students from Danvers have decided that they get a better education at the Essex Tech instead of the Danvers High School. Now, this has been discussed over and over again, and I have even presented a video that they prepared to keep and attract students to stay in Danvers. That's not the problem. The problem is the discipline, the curriculum, and the disgusting uh, situation in regard to LGBTQ and other uh, issues that have been presented to our students and our parents are getting fed up with it. Uh, why were private schools able to operate as usual during the apparent pandemic? Why are the Danvers School Department administrators so concerned why the Essex Tech attracts so many students year after year? Because Danvers schools do not attract students to stay in our system. We need to determine what the problem is, and nobody wants to address that. Education policies regarding curriculum, content, and expectations have focused on critical race theory, indoctrination, health, sex education, and social feelings, and not on true education subjects who authorize these policies and activities. Every time the question is raised, why are we going in this direction, the answer from the school committee who is supposed to be setting the policies, is that it is directed by the Board of Education, State of Massachusetts Board of Education. So why do we need the school committee? School committee doesn't have any action. All they do is listen to complaints, and they don't do anything about them. What steps will we take to improve the current level of education and testing? There's all kinds of promises, but there's no action. Is the school department assuming the responsibility of bringing up our children? Whose children are these? The state or are they our children? 
Now this issue with the school department is nothing new. This has been going on for 20, 25 years. And the results are very evident of what's happening to our students. Education and welfare of our students has always been a primary objective in Danvers. I don't think I've seen any budget, school budget, that has been decreased because they didn't uh, comply with the regulations that they have uh, imposed on our students. Today we have too many administrators, nurses, and psychologists who have falsely assumed the responsibility of bringing up our children. Where are the parents and where are the line teachers in this formula? School departments are responsible for educating and not for social experimentation. We have to stop that. Now, the, this letter continues, and this was sent to the school committee, and I did get a reply from uh, Eric Crane, but it was all fluff and no action. Our school committee members need to refocus their activities to educating our students and not on controlling the social aspects of our school population. What are we afraid of? The re retaliation by the health department and possibly by the teachers union. Teachers union has been very active in this matter, but they have not complied or confirmed that we have a problem. The parents must take back their rights and resume the role of bringing up their children. School committees must rely on input by parents who entrust their children to your care. We have been promised a survey of why some of these students are leaving the school department, our school department, and going to other facilities. That has never materialized. I have been asking for that at the August 2021 meeting that was very, very interesting because parents finally spoke up and demanded that something does change. And, but nothing did change. The one thing is they've got three new school committee members, but the old members are still in charge. So I don't know what's going to happen, but we need to ask the question. We need to go to the school committee meeting. I will host a program, and I believe it's going to be on August 11th, where I want to bring in uh, parents and maybe the school committee chairman, because he was very willing to do the last show that we had, and I'd like to discuss those particular issues because this needs attention and needs attention now. The attempt by the school, by, no, not by the school, but possibly by the school department and the town manager have requested that there be legislative action to limit the number of students that can go out to Essex Tech. They want to limit that to 40 per year. And the thing is, this is not the right time or place to put those kinds of restrictions on our students. Our students have a freedom to go to the school that they need. And the problem is, is that all we're ever interested in is the cost of Essex Tech. The Essex Tech cost per student is very similar to what it costs our high school level students because we have the facilities, but we have excess facilities now, and that's why they're complaining, but they cannot solve the issue. And I have a solution for them. Cut your budget to compensate for Essex Tech. 
Essex Tech deserves to be in a position to educate our students. I was on the merger committee back in 97, 98, and that was the wishes of our town that this school be funded as a technical high school, and we owe that funding to our students and our residents. So, I have uh, very few additional comments, but I will uh, go back to my final comment, and it's time for Danvers to speak up with the United Voice to tell the education establishment we are watching, and we want them to stop indoctrinating our kids with radical left propaganda. The indoctrination in our schools is being disguised and needs to be exposed. Parents and the community must ask for leadership from our school committee. We need public communication and not the dribble on the websites rarely opened by our residents. Technology is not the answer for communication. The entire Danvers community needs to know what and how our children are being educated. The newly elected school committee members need to stand up and protect our children and parents. So what I'm really asking here is we need to communicate face to face and David, if you can throw in my favorite Albert Einstein quote, I think that will be our most important piece of information that we share with you today. And the quote that Albert made, I fear the day that technology will surpass our human interaction, the world will have a generation of idiots. And that's what we need to get off our internet connections, our phones, because everywhere you look, everybody's looking at their phone, and that's their communication. Albert was absolutely right, and we need to get off and get communications going between all of the parents, all of the residents of Danvers, and the school department. What they're doing is they're avoiding communication with the general public, but the general public are the ones that pay your bills. So Albert, thank you for your quote. And what I'm just going to, my final comments, uh, when will this town discuss the issues that affect us all? We need to communicate in person and share the vision and objectives of our community. Our elected officials do not want to conduct open meetings with in-person communications. We need interaction to come up with quality of life we deserve. Our next show will be on September, uh, I mean, uh, August 11th, 22. We're into August already. Beginning of the school year is coming up. And what I'm trying to do is get a panel discussion in regard to what our school department is doing about improving the education and how they will uh, be challenged to do that because our school department needs a kick in the butt. So thank you for joining me tonight and I apologize for the delay of this program for two or three weeks now, but we will get better and hopefully we can accomplish our goals of communication. Thank you, Danvers. Good night.